Given the task of producing a high altitude clear weather interceptor to replace the MiG-9, the MiG Bureau came up with a revolutionary design. First flown in late 1946, it used a two-chamber liquid rocket motor that produced 3,400 pounds of thrust. This power enabled high speeds, a high rate of climb, and a high ceiling, features which were to remain with all later MiG designs. For the first time, a MiG had a slender swept wing and a T-shaped tail. These early prototypes were such an advance on any plane built anywhere before that Mikoyan and Gurdievich each received the Stalin Prize, or 150,000 rubles in 1947. In the spring of 1948, this radical design was ordered into production as the MiG-15. It had a 45 degree swept wing, a maximum speed of 652 miles an hour, and a ceiling of 50,000 feet. It retained the MiG-9's 37 and two 23 millimeter cannons. It could fly from unmade and grass airfields and had a short takeoff run. Its modular design made it easy to assemble and maintain. A four-man crew could replace an engine in an hour and a wing in 25 minutes. Some 18,000 were produced and eventually flew with almost 30 air forces throughout the world. Here was the plane that would threaten United Nations air supremacy in the early days of the Korean War. was the first time that smaller nations were used as stand-ins for the ideological conflict between the United States and the Soviet Union. As warfare between the two superpowers client states flared hot, the tension of the Cold War fueled the demand for air superiority. The Mikoyan Design Bureau continued its quest for bigger, faster, more powerful fighter aircraft. In their next MiG, Mikoyan and Gurdievich incorporated lessons learned in Korea. This fighter went into production as the MiG-17 in 1952. It was larger than the MiG-15, but with its new after-burning engine and 45-degree swept wings, it could fly faster at 711 miles an hour and higher at 54,500 feet. Design changes eliminated the MiG-15's tendency to roll into an uncontrollable spin during a high-speed turn. The MiG-17 saw action in the defense of Egypt against the English during the Suez Canal crisis in 1956 extensively by the Arabs against Israel in both the Six-Day War in 1967 and the 1973 Yom Kippur War. Versatile and long-lived, the MiG-17 even played a major role defending North Vietnamese targets against American bombers in the late 1960s. The next MiG was born out of the desire for even more speed. As early as 1950, the Defense Ministry ordered a day fighter which could achieve supersonic speed. Flight laboratories tested new aerodynamic wing shapes and the characteristics of straight, swing, and delta wing designs were investigated. The result was this twin-engine prototype its two-man crew was seated side by side, and its engines were mounted in tandem. Later prototypes featured a liquid fuel rocket engine that reduced the takeoff run and boosted speed and altitude.
early flights reached the sound barrier. Grigory Sadov was the chief test pilot during this time. In May 1952, we started to explore supersonic flight with a prototype for the MiG-19, the SN-2. But the thrust was not great enough. In January 1954, after installing more powerful engines with afterburners, we found that we could overcome the sound barrier in horizontal flight. It was a very important step for us. The MiG-19 was the first supersonic military fighter aircraft. But for us, it was not just a fighter. It was the way forward to designing supersonic planes. The prototypes flown by Sadov went into production as the MiG-19. In addition to its highly swept 58-degree wing, it featured two turbojets, each generating 7,300 pounds of thrust. It had nose-mounted compressors and afterburn chambers, which ensured high power-to-weight ratios. With a speed of 900 miles an hour, it was the world's first mass-produced supersonic fighter. Various innovations included rocket-assisted takeoff, which could lift the MiG to 80 feet and a speed of 150 miles an hour in three seconds. Mid-air refueling from flying tankers was also developed. Using wing-mounted nozzles on the MiG-19 and a nose-mounted cone system on the MiG-15, this considerably increased the range of these aircraft which were not known for their fuel efficiency. In the mid-1950s, the threat of Western intercontinental nuclear bombers loomed large to the Soviets. An entirely new supersonic high-altitude interceptor was ordered. To meet the challenge, the Mikoyan Bureau departed from the popular swept wing and created a delta wing design. This design offered greater speed and maneuverability, but with reduced weight. The new wing overcame the stability and handling problems of earlier aircraft. The prototype first flew on June 16, 1956. By 1958, the plane had set a new altitude record of 111,500 feet. speed record of 1,335 miles an hour, almost 500 miles per hour faster than the MiG-19. Later, test pilot Georgi Masolov would break even that with a speed of 1,484 miles an hour. This Mach 2 interceptor was designated as the MiG-21 and went into production in 1960 became the most successful and widely used Soviet fighter. Delivered to 30 countries in numerous variations, it has set 17 world records. It was powered by an after-burning turbojet with an automatic system of air intake ramps for supersonic flight and armed with the Soviet's latest air-to-air -air missiles and a 30-millimeter cannon. Although introduced quite late to the Vietnam War, the MiG-21 was used effectively to down B-52 strategic bombers. But the United States hadn't been standing still, and the F-4 Phantom was a formidable adversary. favorite tactic of the North Vietnamese pilots was to use the by now comparatively slow and underarmed MiG-17 as bait to lure the American Phantoms. On engaging the MiG-17, 